So you buy this laptop in the hopes of gaining super high FPS, but you don't. And to make matters worse, no matter what kind of hardware you throw at it, it just doesn't seem to improve. I know, it's Optimus, so stick to the end of the video and know not just how you can bypass Optimus in this device, but how graphics is processed by Optimus, Amux Switch, and Advanced Optimus. So to begin with, let's see how graphics are processed on this Asus ROG Streak Scar 15. Say you are on the go and on battery power, or you're doing some very light graphic power work. Your CPU sends your graphic workload to your iGPU for graphic processing, and then to your display. This method is great for 1. Good thermals, 2. Long battery life, and a reasonable smooth experience. But, say you suddenly want to do this. <laughs> The CPU instantly, intelligently and seamlessly shifts its output from the iGPU to the power GPU for graphic processing. But in the case of Optimus, instead of feeding its output to the display directly, it's instead fed to the iGPU, which then routes the rendered frames to the display. Now this form of rendering is great when you're only playing high graphic, low frame rate games. This will only yield a frame loss of about 0 to 6%. Now the problem arises when you play high FPS, low graphic settings games like Fortnite and Valorant, where even though your CPU and your GPU are fully capable of shooting 300 frames per second, your iGPU here becomes a concern. This is also the reason why you saw why I didn't bother overclocking the CPU or the GPU in Valorant. By the way, you can check that video in the description. But the heartbreaking thing is this comes with a 300 hertz screen and the fact that there's probably no game out there that can match its screen frequency is nothing but depressing. Is that all? No. Optimus also affects DLSS. You see, high graphic output comes on the screen at high bit volume. So when your GPU receives a lower res input and upscales it using DLSS at a performance output, the render out, even though at low FPS compared to competitive gaming, comes at a high bit volume, along with a higher frame count. This puts pressure on the iGPU and in turn creates a bottleneck. And there goes your precious DLSS out the window partially out the window. I'm not sure how much of a frame loss therein will be, but you can be sure it's greater than traditional rendering and quality DLSS. So there is, as of now, no escaping or no getting around Optimus. Or is there? We'll get to that. For now, what if this laptop had a MUX switch? Then all the complex issues in Optimus are gone. But a trade-off. You lose the seamless transition between your iGPU and your power GPU. You see, every time you make a switch, you are required, in fact it's a must, to make a full system restart to establish a stable, proper connection. Now in the real world, God forbid if you're booting off a hard drive, or when you're on the go but you forget to switch to your iGPU only to find that your battery is all drained up because it was using the power GPU. But you see, in spite of this, the main advantage that dominates over all the disadvantages is the fact that you don't have an iGPU bottleneck. To explain, say you want 9 hours of battery life and great thermals. Switch to your iGPU and there you have 9 hours battery life and good thermals. Now say you want to do this. <laughs> Switch to your power GPU. Here, instead of your heavy graphic output going to your iGPU, it's instead fed through an established switch connection, which in turn is given directly to your display. This method will give you zero frame loss, and your only bottlenecks are either the CPU or the GPU. Say you're playing a traditionally rendered game. Zero frame loss. Say you lowered the graphics in Fortnite or Valorant to gain 300 plus FPS. You got it! DLSS will never let you down, giving you twice the performance just like they advertised on their page. But do bear in mind, for every switch you make, 
you need a full system restart. Now, if restarting every time you make a switch bothers you, but you love what the Mux has to offer, NVIDIA has you covered with a prefix to Optimus, Advanced Optimus. So what if this laptop had Advanced Optimus? Well, life could not get any simpler. Through what NVIDIA claims, you have the best of both worlds, the seamless transition of traditional Optimus and the great advantages of what Mux has to offer. So one, no bottlenecks and no constant annoying restarts every time you have to make a switch. And as a result, you have smooth, seamless transitions from one GPU to the other. So guys, Advanced Optimus is just an OTA update from Optimus, right? No. You see, Advanced Optimus requires your power GPU to have a direct connection to your display, much like the MUX switch. So well, with the device, you're pretty much stuck with Optimus. Or are you? Alright, I've got to stop doing that. All right, I'll cut to the chase. Can you bypass Optimus on this device? The short answer is yes. The long answer is it's a little complex. Because you see, if you're thinking of bypassing Optimus within the device, it is near to impossible. In fact, it is impossible. But if you were to open the NVIDIA control panel, you can observe NVIDIA has a direct display output through the Type-C port, which means after prioritizing your external display as your main display with an established connection through your Type-C port, you can now enjoy the max performance your hardware has to offer. Now I'll be testing that theory out, so don't miss out on that coming video. Plus, if you're wondering what was all this, this was WASD Club. Stay subscribed, do like if you like the video, comment always, I love answering queries, and I'll see you next time.